is the number one live podcast in the world. Put your hands together for yourselves for making it out. Jesus Christ. Believe it or not, I'm the host of the show, Tony. Uh, you know, I like it like that. Everybody does. Nice and quiet and super fucking weird. Right. At the part where you realize when you're announcing the name and you don't even hear yourself, <laughs> what's the I point knew of it even... I knew what it was. Uh, see, we've been using uh, the back mixer for uh, Pat, so uh, uh, Josh forgot to turn up this mixer in the back. I shouldn't have. Uh, I shouldn't have w wanted an explanation. Right. Yeah. Uh, everybody, shit. welcome to the show. One more time. Let's see how loud we can get it for our people listening on UStream. Make some noise Monday night. <laughs> yeah. Here we are. There we go. That's how the show starts. Welcome, everybody. I'm very excited. For those of you watching on Ustream right now, if you live near Nashville, Tennessee, we're going to be there uh, this, this Sunday, yeah. so that's for you guys. And a bunch of other fun stuff coming up, too. Right? Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm doing uh, Kansas City, so if you're from there, I'm doing there first week of June. Uh, I'm uh, in the Bellevue Parlor Live in Seattle, June 24th and 25th. We're rescheduling a Kill Tony for somewhere near there. Soon. That clown place that we like, that was in Portland, right? Yeah. June 30th, July 1st, I'm in St. Louis for the very first time. And uh, La Jolla, August 5th, 6th, 7th, 9th, I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma, 10th, 13th. Look at this. This is an announcement. I'm at the Punchline Comedy Club headlining the 13th and 14th in oh, San shit. Francisco and the 15th and the 16th in Sacramento. And next week, we're going to be in the main room of the Comedy Store doing Kill yes. Tony. In October 8th, I'm in Boston, Massachusetts at the Wilbur Theater. I have to promote these dates because I have to fill up these venues. It's very hard to do. Uh, yeah, we're in the main room next week, and that's yeah. going to be epic. I'm warning you guys right now that it's going to be out of control. And I have a special super surprise for you guys. Tonight's episode will also be out of control. After 156 episodes, you are at the final belly room kill Tony. Wow. That's actually pretty sad. <laughs> We've evolved a lot. There and used to be no Jamie Vernon on the HD camera. And there isn't tonight either. So. Ryan J. Ebelt is here. He draws every single episode. He has a blank sheet of paper in front of him right now. By the end of the episode, that's going to be filled with tonight's episode. You have to see it to believe it. You can meet him and buy a Kill Tony poster after the show on the front patio. One more time for Ryan J. Ebelt, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. His work's on RyanJEbelt.com. He's the artist of Kill Tony, and he sells the official Kill Tony poster at RyanJEbelt.com. This, however, is one of my favorite parts of the show. It has been, for those of you that have been listening for a long time, you know the last few months have been insane at our newfound chemistry with our new favorite fucking thing in the world. It's the band, the one, the only, Reagan and Watkins, everybody. Here they are. They have lemonade. Oh, they're giving out lemonade to the audience. And they are pouring it in cups. Oh, that's very nice. Very low quality lemonade for those of you paying attention. It is Minute Maid. Wow. It's uh, very, I don't know if they thought this was going to happen quickly. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. They could have pre-poured these and saved a few minutes Maybe. of dead <laughs> podcast airtime. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean... So far, fuck yeah. All right, Reagan and Watkins. Oh, that's not lemonade, by the way. Do not drink that. Oh. That's a terrible joke, guys. Yes. No mic on the band. Yes. Yeah. Wow. There it is. Yes. Holy yes. shit. Queen. Yes, queen. Oh, yes. We're here. You know who the queen is, Jeremiah. Who's that? Yeah. Uh, Queen Tony! Yeah. Oh, I, wow. I feel the burn on that one. Uh, <laughs> these guys just came back with uh, a couple cartons of Minute Maid lemonade. and uh, Only the finest for Kill Tony. Wait, what is this new character oh you guys God, are Oh, my God. We doing? saw Beyonce this weekend. <laughs> Anyone else see Beyonce this weekend? Woo! Woo! Participation. Uh, yeah, <laughs> now, last that. week, you guys came out to Rihanna's Umbrella, and you did a whole act out with that. I, th I, was, I was on Twitter today, and somebody said my mind was blown that Tony thought that song was three years old. And I made fun of you guys because I, I really thought it was about three, you know, maybe four years old. And uh, I looked it up. 
Nine years old that song is. Queen, nine years. <laughs> so, <laughs> could it? Cause so you guys think maybe there's a chance that in your unconscious minds, like me making fun of you for doing such an old reference last week, made you do something with a brand new reference that made almost zero sense whatsoever? Yes. What do you think, Tony? Silly question. <laughs> Fuck yeah, baby. Yes. We've been on a run with about 12 of our best episodes of all time, and I've been waiting for moments like this to happen continuously from the start of the show. Who's ready for a clunker of a show? <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Snoop's ready. Sounds like Snoop's ready. This place is in such a ruckus, I almost spilled my needless lemonade that I'm never going to touch. Oh, which reminds me, <laughs> when, it this, Tony. when it comes to drinks that I don't want to spill, Adam Carolla's Mangria Wine Cocktail, ready to drink, original orange. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> if we pull out of this, it's going to be unbelievable. Uh, this, is, this is just a hot tail spin right from the get. You know, this is how a lot of plane crashes happen. A lot of people get scared midway through the air when you feel a little turbulence. Literally 95% of all plane crashes, fun fact, happen on either the takeoff or the landing. The landing. We're on the takeoff right now and uh, not looking good. I think a couple engines are blown out. I think a couple mines are already blown, I'll tell you that much. We are 0 for 11 on all jokes, including myself. There has not really been a single real pop in this room yet tonight. There's been a lot of attempts uh, on everybody's part so far. Really not one uh, gen, gen, you know, like overall consensus that any single thing's been funny. Um, I don't know. Should we start know. over again, maybe one more time? We've got more lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> we got more cups. Yeah. We got cups and lemonade. And there's a lot more Beyonce. Uh, before we bring up tonight's guest, I do want to have this one interaction with you guys. I don't know if you noticed this yesterday, Pat, but I thought it was funny on my way over here. I thought about it. Last night, a guy tweeted at me something, and I was, like, driving. Oh, yeah, I was coming back from Irvine, and I'm, like, going over it. But I saw, like, can, I saw something like, can you tell me what Pat Reagan's Twitter handle At Tony Hinchcliffe, can you tell me what Pat Reagan's Twitter handle is? Because I want to tell him, you know, what a killer he is on the show. It's like what I saw. And I said, you know, I'm driving. Like, I'm going like 80 on the freeway. And I'm like, at Patty Reagan. And I sent it to him, tagged his thing in it, right? And then I see him tag both of us. And he goes, you know, at Tony Hinchcliffe, at Pat Reagan. Pat, I just want to let you know you're the worst. You know, shut up. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't ever talk during the show. You kill every Classic episode. Breather, yeah. And it turns out that what he was saying was is that you killed the show. Yeah. <laughs> what I read was like, you kill on the show. Yeah. He was saying that I killed the momentum, but I don't read those negative comments because I don't need negativity in my life, Tony. Oh, man. Can we undo the Beyonce <laughs> thing? Is this possible? Maybe we should restart. I don't know. Can you undo women empowerment? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. See, I like, I, I like that part of the impression a lot. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we have a lot of fun every single week. Uh... We're going to do it again. Are you guys ready to meet tonight's guest, ladies yeah! and gentlemen? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This was a weird I'm excited one. for all of you. He's one of my best friends, one of the funniest human beings in the world. You know him. You love him. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the Roast Master General, Jeffrey Ross. Ladies and gentlemen, he's here live in the flesh. You fuckers are done clapping. Are you serious? Good morning, everybody. You come to this room. Tony. Yeah. It's Why a are you yelling at them? They're a great <laughs> crowd. I know. I know. I They're love them. Why oh, this, wow. Look at who's this, this guy doing his SATs over here? <laughs> is everything all right? Are you writing a suicide note? <laughs> I think okay. it's a great crowd. Yeah. Hi, you guys. Hey, what's up? How about a hand for the band? Aren't they great? You're right. Sometimes some sound issues throw me off, Jeff, and I go I go a little crazy right from the beginning because it seems like it's one of the easiest things to ever figure out in the entire world. 
And uh, we sound in the belly room is historically terrible. It's so, true. Yeah. I really, I wouldn't take it out. I don't. I, w I wouldn't it's worry. About it. <laughs> the sound is. Sam Kinison's mother did the sound here. <laughs> That's why he started screaming. Actually. Yeah. It's a famous room, the belly room. Yeah. There's ghosts here. Speaking of ghosts, Brian is here. <laughs> <laughs> This is uh, one of the most historical rooms in comedy, and uh, a lot of people are talking because, ladies and gentlemen, Roast Battle, which Jeff is a huge part of. Every Tuesday. Every single Tuesday here in the Comedy Store Belly Room is going to Comedy Central. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. Started right here. Yeah. Just like us a few years ago, and we've been making Mondays and Tuesdays nuts here for three years. The comedy store is having a moment. Yeah, it's really wild. Thanks to this uh, Kill Tony. Brian, is everything all right? Yeah. Are you getting a window seat for your gig in town? <laughs> no, I'm getting ready for the show. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm doing like 20 things over here. Yeah, it's an exciting time. Uh, Tony, how's it going? It's going good, man. Life Why don't you is... plug six more dates before the show starts? <laughs> well, I have to do it in the beginning. There you go. Yeah, blow the horse on that one. Good one, Brian. Uh, yeah, no, I have to get it out there because I'm touring. I'm all grown up now, and I have to, I have to go. You know these. who else is on tour? Beyonce. Beyonce is on tour now. <laughs> oh, I love Beyonce. Me too. Oh, yes, too. This, you... is, this is your first time on the show with the new band, right? I, did you guys see Beyonce? <laughs> yeah, we did. Oh, Are you... so good. Halfway through, I got my period. <laughs> For oh, the first Jeff. time. <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> so, Jeff, it's been a while since you've been on. Welcome back to the show. Great to be here, Tony. You also have, I also want to mention that you have one of the coolest comedy specials that I've ever heard conceived coming out. We can talk about it, right? Of course. Your last special, you went to a federal prison or prison and roasted prisoners. And this special, and it was epic, by the way. If you haven't seen it, get it on iTunes or ComedyCentral.com ASAP. Thank you. And now, for his new special coming out, I believe, you know the release yet? No, but in a few no, months, no, no, yeah, keep your see. eyes peeled. It is Jeff Ross roasts the Boston Police Department, live from Boston, Massachusetts. Little incest, little father son incest. Yeah. I never would have guessed the police officers would get that type of response, uh, <laughs> but it got sexual. You've in never there. spent time in Boston, obviously. <laughs> By the way, Tony will be at the Wilbur in October. Yeah, that's true. October 8th. Some tickets still available. Yeah, like 500. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, like 700. Uh, <laughs> Talk about a Boston cream pie. <laughs> Ooh. That was dirty. Well, one could say that that joke was a Boston massacre. <laughs> Nothing really. The horse of truth. Or one could say it's a Boston tea party. Oh, oh son yeah. of a bitch. Wow. You really just, I mean, we were just saying Boston over and over again. <laughs> Boston. They say Boston. Yeah. The cops uh, in Boston Police Department, I roast the Boston cops, so uh, look for that. Yeah, it's, very, you, it's another fun, dangerous, exciting roast special. Thank and, you, uh, Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But for tonight, you had to start somewhere, and it was doing short sets in crazy rooms and hoping to get advice from cool comedians. That's so you right. ready to do this again, Jeff? I love it. Bring Audience, it are you first. ready? Here we fucking go. The show begins now. Audience, you know how it works. Comedians, you also know how it works. Comedians get 60 seconds, and your time is up when you hear the sound of a kitty. Aw, isn't that cute? Here, let's make it a little louder. 60 seconds is up when you hear the... <laughs> there it is, yeah. Wrap it up then, or else you're going to bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. You get it? Huh? Do you get it? Don't run the light. <laughs> Fuck yeah. By the way, Tony <laughs> Tony once got hit on by the Hollywood angry bear. It's true. It's true. Hit on from behind. Yep. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. I'm going to pu I pulled the name out of the bucket. This looks like a new name for sure. I hope I say this right. Bradless Felicity Velocity. 
Brad Bradley's Bradley's fellow Somebody has terrible handwriting. You don't even deserve a spot your handwriting so bad. Is there a Bradley in the room at all? Or anybody whose stage name starts with a Bradley? She drives me crazy. Yep, well then you fucked up. Wow. Pulled another name out of the bucket. The name is Trenton Favor. <laughs> This is the only episode that I've ever wished. The, the guy's not here? Only time I've ever... The guy's not here? He's not here. What's his name? Trevor Favor. Fuck you, Trevor. Where are you? That's right. Yeah. yeah. This is your big break. You just handed it to some fucking nudnik. It's true. Stephen Holloman. Are you kidding me? Come on! You're pissing Pat and I off what over here! Fuck? What are you doing? Bunch of fucking assholes! Come on! Well, they are! You idiots! Get your asses up here! I just. I can't. Wait a not, second. I the guy is really too? What's that? Do you really? I think they're scared to come up and they're here. Hey, this is Barry coming to you live from the world famous comedy store for a brand new episode of Kill Tony Volume 3. Get up for Tony. Let's go. Two, two, one and two, baby. We are live. I am excited about tonight's episode. I feel like everything's going to go perfect. Mangria. Ryan J. Ebel is here. Josh Martin comic. As always, batting a thousand on the sound and the HD camera. We have one of the greatest musical powerhouses in all of comedy with us. It's Reagan and Watkins. Always ready. Always there when I say their name right away with no dead air time. Wow. Keeping it consistent hey. again this week. Hey, every week we have an unbelievable guest. How about this? The Roastmaster General Jeffrey Ross is here tonight. Uh, uh, uh. Look, I love Mangria. I think it's delicious, but can somebody please uh, tell a waitress that I need a Crown and Coke ASAP? <laughs> really badly. Thank you, Josh, so much. I mean, really on Thanks the fly. The, it's been a tradition where I, I eat during your it's podcast. True. It's true. Thank you for the sushi. Definitely. You got it. Sushi from uh I don't mean to Wakana. torture people. This is great. Uh, for those of you listening to the show, you can check out my dates at TonyHinchcliffe.com. Jeff yeah, Ross has know. an unbelievable yeah. special coming up. Oh, we really restarted this. I'm not airing the first 15 minutes of this show. Why? It was great. <laughs> Why? It's no, great. Okay, we're kidding. We're, we'll leave it in. But. All we can say is, bro, it's good to be here. It's good to be here, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. I love these characters that you're doing this week. Good to be here, bro. What's up, bros? Oh, uh, we just went to... We just went to the Jay-Z concert. It was pretty dope. Oh, uh, yeah. I love Jay-Z. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Ryan. Chilling. What's up with you, Jeff? <laughs> you mean Beyonce's husband? Yeah. Beyonce's husband. Oh, yeah. I've heard of him. Our girlfriends were out of town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They were out of town? Yeah, they went to a concert. So now while you guys are they're out of town, you guys get together and go crazy? <laughs> you guessed it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Comedians, you know how it works. You get 60 seconds. Your time's up when you hear the sound of a kitty. <laughs> that means wrap it up then, or else you're gonna bring out the angry West Hollywood bear. There you go. That, there you. Yep. Uh huh. Yep. That's what happens if you do that. I pulled a name out of the bucket. You guys ready to start tonight's show or what? Your first comedian going up tonight goes by the name <laughs> of Jorel Penastre. <laughs> there he is. Oh my god! Oh! Fuck, is that what I look like? <laughs> Damn, no wonder my girlfriend broke up with me today. I look like Manny Pacquiao fucking joined a boy band. <laughs> um, so let's get real. Um, pedophiles, they're the fucking worst, right? <laughs> the worst! They, um, they should 
They deserve capital punishment. But what happens if a kid molests you? What the fuck do you do? <laughs> well, yeah. so, <laughs> this is what happened to me, right? I was, uh, my sister was uh, laying down. My sister was, uh, allegedly, allegedly. Uh, my sister was babysitting a few kids from church and I was asleep in my room and they were digging into my uh, basketball shorts and uh, I did the right thing by turning around pretending any nothing happened, right? But it, that was the right thing to do, right? Because I prefer ass play. <laughs> I felt like they knew what they are doing, you know? Allegedly. Um, Fuck yeah, Jarrell Benastre. This is your first time on the show, right? Second. Huh, where are you from? Moreno Valley. Where? Moreno Valley. Uh-huh. Yeah. Where's that at? Close to Riverside. Gotcha. How long have you been on stand-up? A few months now. What do you do for work? Target. Target. Whoa. What do you do there? <laughs> Stock. Stock. Unload. Is that a night, middle of the nighttime job? Yeah. Huh. So what kind of shift are you working? Uh, actually, it's 4 to four to 11 right now. 4 a.m. till 11 a.m.? Yeah. Wow. There's so a boycott on Target right now, so they don't give me much hours anymore. There's a boycott on Target, so what? They don't give me any hours anymore. Really? Yeah. Who's boycotting it? Christians. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> why? Do you know why Christians are boycotting it? The gender neutral restrooms. Oh, that you guys don't have gender neutral. We have gender neutral restrooms. That's uh, why they're boycotting it. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Which, which is so. Fuck yeah, so you don't have to go to the ladies' room anymore. I need to go to the ladies' room. I work in the freezer sometimes, so I get shrinkage. And Which bathroom do you go to? <laughs> Whichever one's free now, like whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> Whichever one's free. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That's a uh, that's a pretty thin mustache you're working on there. Uh, <laughs> I'm Asian. It took me three months to grow this actually. Fuck yeah. What do you do for fun when you're not working at Target? Uh, right now, I'm masturbate. Other than that. <laughs> Hold the mic still. Oh, um, yo-yo? I yo-yo a lot. You yo-yo? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, really? Yeah, man. Do you have a yo-yo on you right now? Yeah. Oh! oh rock the dog! Rock the dog! Rock the dog! Why don't you, sh why don't you show us some of your yo-yo tricks? Dog. Let's get some Walk music. Let's dog. get some good yo-yo music, Brian. Yeah. Brian, do you have any yo-yo music? <laughs> <laughs> One, two. One, one, one. The music. Dude, is one, that one, a Omega Fireball? One, one, one. <laughs> one, two. All right, let's get a yo-yo intro. Oh, shit. Sure. Yo! Damn, Jarrell Benastre. Wow. Jarrell, we found something that you're good at. Hey, hey ladies, imagine what he can do with your pussy. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Good point, good point. He can walk the dog and eat it. What do you call the, 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 do those tricks have names that you did? Can you give us like, what, what, can you sort of describe it verbally, what you just did? Um, underwater basket weaving is like, that's what the trick is called. <laughs> I don't know. Basket weaving? Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know what stoners name these yo-yo oh. tricks. But you don't, you don't even know the names of them. They should call it like a kickflip or kick something. Flip. Dude, I can rock the cradle. Oh, yeah? Can you really? Whoa! <laughs> Jarrell, can you play the saxophone? Neither can Jeremiah. <laughs> oh, here he is. Yep, it's definitely a cradle, all right. Okay, wait. <laughs> all right, in one, in, one, in one of the worst moves in podcast history, we have turned this into some kind of yo-yo show and tell. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you listening to the show, I just want to let you know. Oh, dude! <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Jeremiah Watkins. 
Rocking the Cradle. I lost my virginity to that song, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I was molested by a mariachi man. <laughs> As sperm. Jarrell, do you come from a big family? Uh, no. No. Just one sister. Just one sister. What do your parents do for work? Uh, my dad works at a vet, and my stepmom's a nurse. Ah, Mexican vet, huh? Filipino. Filipino vet. Oh, that makes sense. This way, the fucking dogs that die come home for dinner. You know what I'm nah, saying? Nah, dude, it's too salty. You don't like it. All right. <laughs> Terrell, do you do a lot of spots? Do you work at it a lot? No, not lately. I've been yeah. depressed. So. Oh, really? What are you depressed about? <laughs> My girlfriend broke up with me. Oh, really? Oh. Why, why, why do you think that happened? Uh... I don't fucking know, to be honest. How long were you with her? Quit playing with your yo-yo and pay attention you to me. Quit playing your yo-yo. What are you doing? Today. You keep playing with that thing. Look at me. Dinner. You're the toughest ever. Me? Come oh on, my God. Serious? You are so Come selfish. Whack the real dog. Yeah. <laughs> Too salty. Too salty. <laughs> I remember back when we used to rock the cradle. Fucking Jarrell. What, ha what, how, long, how long did you date? How long were you with her? Almost four years. Oh, wow. shit. Oh, yikes. Oh, What's the thing you disliked the most about her? Uh, nothing. Everything was perfect. Oh, jeez. Oh, 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 man. Oh, this guy is depressing. Do you yikes. think it's the mustache? Uh. She, she <laughs> One time. You okay, Jarrell? You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. All right. Um, well, you know what? You're a good-looking guy. You seem very positive even while you're depressed. You have a big smile on your face. You're having fun. You're taking jokes. You're killing it on the yo-yo, so I'll bet you anything. A stud like you. <laughs> if you just keep, you know, go outside of nightclubs at night. You know what I mean? You ever think about going outside of nightclubs when all the drunk girls are coming out and just standing there doing some yo-yo tricks? Oh. Maybe bring a little strobe light along with you, a little Bluetooth, play some music. Oh, wow. There's going to be some chick. I'd go stand outside at every Beyonce concert if I was you. Yeah. And as those girls roll out, they're going to fall right into your arms. You're an easy target. Thanks. And you work there, too. So, <laughs> you know. Jeff, any right. advice for any advice Any for advice for Jarrell? Getting into the Jarell, game. Jarrell, what's your last name? How long have you been doing comedy? Just a couple months. You know what? You have a very gentle, nice delivery. You know, your material is kind of funny. It's not really finished yet. There's some funny ideas in there. But you're relaxed and you're a very natural sort of person. You can yo-yo, so you're not afraid of crowds and performing. So I, <laughs> it's true. I would stick with it. I would stick with it. Thanks, man. You had fun tonight. Jarrell Benastre. And by the way, now that you're depressed, you should be writing because that's when all the funny shit's going to happen. There he goes, Jarrell Benastre. He's on Twitter at Jarrell underscore Benastre. J-O-R-R-E-L-B-E-N-A-S-F-R-E. Something like that. These people have the worst handwriting. You guys take a moment and really print your name nice and slow. You'll get your name said right and shit. You know that, right? It's a whole thing. <laughs> like this one, for example. Oh, I think I actually know this. German Seedhe, maybe? Motherfucker. This is a weird night. I bet you will be. Are you using last week's bucket bag? <laughs> Zachary Stein, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Thank you. Um, my mom is a racist. And uh, that's hard on me, you know, because I'm like anti-racism, uh, which I know is a very courageous stance to take. <laughs> and uh, I know some of you might not want to laugh at that because you're like, oh, an old white racist, that's the worst thing there is. But don't worry, my mom's an Arab, so you're fine. <laughs> but then you might be thinking, oh, an Arab racist. Aren't all Arabs racist? And that's a good point, they are. But my mom's different. My mom is a white racist in an Arab woman's body. Like she loves white people, hates other Arabs. It's amazing. She's like, she's like the Jackie Robinson of white racism. Like, she's coming for your spot, and she's better than you. <laughs> My mom's like the Jackie Robinson of hating Jackie Robinson. <laughs> you also might have noticed I don't look very half Arab. Uh, there's a good reason for that. I had a surrogate mother. 
Uh, the official reason for that was my mom was getting up there in years. Uh, there's an, if she had a baby, there's an increased chance of me being born, you know, like stupid or something. But I don't buy that for a second. I just think she didn't want. And it whoa, whoa, jeez, that bear came out really quick that time. So did something else, Tony. By the way, nice boner. Brian seems to flaccid. think you have a boner. Fully flaccid. There's a lot of junk in that trunk. <laughs> yeah, I mean. No, I, have, I got. I'm okay there. I want it. Zachary. Okay. First of all, good set. Put your hands together for Zachary, everybody. Uh, I want to congratulate you all these years on never shooting your eye out, like, <laughs> like so many people thought you were going to. So many people told you that that could happen. You ever do a joke about that before? No, a lot of people introducing me have, so. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Oh, yikes. Really? They introduced you as a guy that looks like they got their yeah, eyes yeah. shot out? Oh, wow. God. A lot of hacks are bringing you up. Yeah. How do you eat mashed potatoes? <laughs> Uh, Zachary, where are you from? Detroit. Where? Detroit area. How long have you been in L.A.? Uh, since October. Oh, okay. That's nice. Been doing a lot of work? Yeah. Or er, free, but yeah. Right. Well, what do you do for a living? I manage a hair salon in Santa Monica. Oh, oh shit. Cool. <laughs> Fuck yeah. How do you get in that game? How does that work? I'll tell you how. He's got yeah. a huge dick. Look <laughs> <laughs> it really is. It really is. Out of all the things that you podcast listeners haven't been able to see tonight, <laughs> including the great yo-yo disaster of 2016. <laughs> uh, I just Instagram I mean, it. It really it. is. Like, I mean, it's pretty unbelievable. Did, 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 is, there, is there anything in there other than your dick? Just is, my dick. Just your dick. Is it is it is it as big as it seems? No, it's it's very it's girthy. It's big. It's got. Wow. <laughs> it's very interesting. Yeah, but I like I was a late bloomer. So I had like a small cock forever. Yeah. <laughs> and I like had to grow up with that, and then I it was like ugly duckling thing, you know. This is so fucking funny to me. I love your honesty. Got a smile. Like how old were you? How 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 long? <laughs> how old were you when your dick started getting bigger? Like nineteen. Nineteen. Yeah. <laughs> so you're 19 you're you have this little dick you're, you're like 19, man you're 19 your dick's 12 <laughs> yeah and then I, you, and then you wake up and i actually developed like a small penis humiliation fetish when it was small wow what does that even mean <laughs> it's like when you're like into like women making fun of the size of your cock <laughs> wow. I will read it. and then right when you got into having a small dick your dick's like fuck this we're blowing up <laughs> yeah Nothing works out for me. I love that. How, how does that happen? Like, did did your dick just start like eating your side dishes at dinner or something like that? <laughs> like, <laughs> have you ever thought about not tucking your shirt in if you have such a huge girthy dick? <laughs> I don't know what that would benefit. So you like it when people see it. Yeah. You, uh, uh, it's pretty blatant. Fuck. Like it's <laughs> pretty <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I, I'm oh, deleting geez. these photos off Dude. my phone right now. Do we have a guy with a boner on stage right now? <laughs> yeah. Are you? Are you? Are you? <laughs> 100% flaccid. Like, yeah, I'm Do you get a lot of pussy working at this hair salon? I don't care that much about fucking. Like, I, I'll just get a prostitute if I want to fuck really bad. But, like. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I do okay. Like if I if I'm like if I really want to fuck something, I can I can generally make it work out for myself. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you gotta talk so about this dick on stage, do you? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. You do? I got three minutes on it. Three minutes uh, on it. You should get seven to ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I if I could get that time out here, I would. <laughs> yeah. You can uh, in the back. Oh, cool. Uh, Zachary, tell us uh, something else interesting about you. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking Milton Burl's nephew up here. <laughs> <laughs> and for people who are just listening to this, this isn't like some dude in sweatpants. This guy's wearing normal pants. Yeah. Like jeans. God. He looks like he could be like Drew Carey with leukemia. <laughs> But younger, he's just a normal guy. He's not like a freak or anything. He's just a yeah. Yeah, you seem like a uh, like a young professional, uh, with you know that has, just has an outrageous dick. This guy's a freak. Yeah, you have to be a freak. <laughs> like some real Fifty Shades of Grey shit going oh, yeah, on, right? Yeah, no, I'm like, uh, yeah, fucking. What's some other crazy shit that you're into sexually? Uh, yeah, I, would I mean, obviously, you get turned on performing in the belly room. <laughs> I, you know, I, 
like a good uh, fight, like hit in the face during. Yeah. Hey, wait, you you yeah. like to get hit in the face? Yeah, yeah. Like punched or like slapped? Ow, right yeah. fucking yeah. fist. <laughs> <laughs> you like to be choked? Yeah, of course. Wow. Of course. <laughs> of course. Silly question, Red Band. What a yeah. great answer. Of course. Have you seen my dick through my pants? Uh, do you have any outfits that unzip through them around the mouth? <laughs> Not yet. No. Not yet. Still, you know. What's one of the myself. craziest things that you've ever had happen to you? Sexually. I mean, if getting uh, punched in the face is what you ask for and getting choked isn't, of course, then what's like, <laughs> what's the point where you're like, whoa, 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 whoa? My first time, like, ever with a prostitute, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to, like, Google phone numbers and stuff to figure right. out if it's legit, which is, if you don't know, you should do that. But, uh,. <laughs> But have you noticed that there's been a lot of false like uh, results on Google? Oh lately? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Really nobody, guy. nobody can relate to your guys' <laughs> prostitute <laughs> issues. Welcome, keep going welcome. with your story, Zachary. Please keep going. Welcome to so escort crosstalk with Red Band. <laughs> yeah, guy. let's not. So, uh, so, like, it was. She was right in Detroit. The picture is this beautiful black woman. Like, I was so excited. And uh, as they are. And then, she, uh, had you been with a beautiful black woman before? I had been with a not beautiful black woman right. before. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is you're, you know, you're a white guy and you hook up with these black women and they see your dick and they're like, oh shit, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I had a stripper like um, when I was getting a lap dance. She like like grabbed me down there. She was like, but you're white. It was <laughs> the weirdest <laughs> thing. But you're white. <laughs> and, uh, so uh, what happened with the first beautiful black so, prostitute? It was, I mean, she looked like maybe that was her before, like, heroin and crack or something. And then, like, she was just really busted out. And it was shady. Like, there were two people in there. She's like, oh, let's go in this room. There's just, it's a hotel, it's a motel, but it's still just a mattress on a floor. And it's very springy. And um, she's like, do you want the front or the back? Which I didn't even do. And I, I was like, The front oh, or the back? The, the pussy or the back pussy. And oh. I... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Wait, wait! I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> I'm confused." Or asshole. And I, I did you take a look at the asshole? Did it look like crumb cake or anything? Well, I had never done anal. I had never done anal because women aren't often very willing. With, women aren't often very willing. Cause See, I have a, yeah, because I have the big cock. Can we uh, do it? <laughs> <laughs> Can How we do, do a poll? all of these loaded at once? And then, um, so I went like I was like, oh, I'll take the ass. I've never done that. Can we do a poll to and see it, who wants to keep listening? No, I I definitely do. Are you yes. kidding me? Yeah. This is incredible. <laughs> so, uh, just, wait, you're so she says, "Do you want the front or the back?" And you say the back yeah. because you haven't done that before. Yeah, never. And um, I, it was like I ended up switching to the front because the back was like the most cavernous thing I've ever the been front inside and the back. of. So, she does. okay, we're talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously you haven't been paying much attention here. <laughs> so you're telling me that you. Put it in her butt, and it was, and it was so cavernous. Is was, was your word? You, yeah. So yes. you're saying that her butt was so loose that loose. you're like, you know what? Her ass is so loose. I gotta try this vagina. Out. It was tighter than her butt. Her vagina was tighter than her butt. Yeah. Oh, it was stalactites, then, stalagmites, bats, all kinds of creatures. I went spelunking in that butthole. <laughs> It was quite yeah. gross. I lost myself actually. My whole body actually went inside the butthole for a little bit. I can't, and with your dick, I can't imagine how oh loose God. this asshole must be. Thank you, Pat. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, just the timing of just, all right. So, I, yeah. we still haven't gotten to the crazy part of this story. That's what's well, nuts, right? I, I, I finished with her, I got out, and then there's just this big fucking, like, six foot six black dude in the next room, like, just staring me down as I leave, and it's, and she just gave him, like, a head nod, like, okay, and I left. But, like, I... I probably could have gotten murdered or robbed or something. How long was he way. in the room? I have no idea. He wasn't there when I got there. It was like in the adjacent room that I walked through to get into the room. And I come out and there's just this big fucking menacing well, looking dude. He came out of ass. <laughs> <laughs> <That's good. laughs> wow. So the six foot six black guy. Yeah, and, and that was it. You just walked by. And I just fucking walked out and hope I didn't. Nothing happened to me. I didn't look back and just fucking got right to the car. I mean, had he punched you in the face, you probably would have came again anyway, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. That might be one of the most racist sound effects ever. Uh, is that is that your black guy sound effect? 
Jeff, uh, what do you think about Zach? I have, I have a question for you. Do you need an opener? <laughs> <laughs> Like, Let's you know, go on the road. We'll have some fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> With your dick and my act, we're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So Anyway, my advice to you would be to keep keep on doing it. Use a little bit of that, uh, I don't know, whatever you want to call it inside you, your sexuality. Use it a little bit in your humor. Slow that shit down. Yeah. You had some good ideas, but you're flying through them in a way. And I know you only have a couple minutes, but yeah, you know, one, yeah. use your confidence. Use your use your confidence that you use in private. Use it a little bit on the audience. Okay. And really, like, if your yeah. dick is like that all the time, put it up like in the flip cage underneath <laughs> your belt because we're all just staring at your dick. Like it's you're totally at like head length, like to your dick. It's like that's no, distracting, I, I, right? I, I disagree. I say uh, I say you keep David Bowieing that shit and just <laughs> fucking stuff it and forget it and rock it. Uh, Stein, that's uh, so you're Jewish? Yeah. Wow, that is just a double conundrum there. I mean, doesn't make sense. You know those, you know those Jews are known for their massive penises. One hundred percent Hebrew national. Cook. <laughs> <laughs> that's thing. Yeah, baby. There he goes, everyone. Zachary Stein. He's on Twitter at hack underscore Stein, S T E I N. Interesting a, people, Tony. Yeah, it, it is interesting. interesting Ima imagine people. the people that missed their spot. <laughs> imagine the people that didn't show up. That are like, uh, where's the room again? <laughs> this guy just uses his dick as a compass. <laughs> oh, this looks like another new name. Put your hands together for Bill Russ, everybody. Bill Russ. Pretty well known that uh, women on average make less than men. I wonder how many transgenders transitioning from male to female will stop because they don't want to take the pay cut. <laughs> Feel sorry for gay homeless people because they don't have a closet to come out of. <laughs> Got kicked out of a strip bar for giving the girls counterfeit dollar bills. Told them what's the big deal, the tits are fake. Some friends of mine just found out they're having an unplanned pregnancy, so now they're out shopping for dumpsters. <laughs> a while ago, I got into debt real heavily, had to borrow some money, and I saw this ad. You've probably seen it said, uh, bad credit, no credit, no problem. Well, three months later, apparently there was a problem. They seemed really surprised I couldn't pay. I'm like, you knew my history. I'm like, what the hell were you thinking, loaning me money? Then thankfully I got a letter from them the other day that said final notice, so I'm just glad that's over. <laughs> If, uh, if someone in Texas sent a message to someone in Mexico, it would be a Tex-Mex text message. Fuck yeah. Bill Russ. Wow. Holy shit. Thank you. Bill, you are so fucking cool. Step up to the mic. Let me talk to you for a second. How long have you been doing stand-up? 18 years. 18 years. Those are some unbelievable jokes. So great. Where you been doing it at? Uh, I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. I did radio for a long time. For uh, yeah. A lot of Ohio people here, including Red Band and I. In fact, uh, he is friends with my cousin, Josh Robert Thompson. Oh, fuck Whoa. yeah. yeah I just, just had him on his show a couple of days ago. Yeah. He's awesome. And I, uh, no, I did radio for 10 years, worked all over the country. Then I uh, went to a comedy club in Virginia Beach. I lived in Virginia Beach the past 20 years. And I uh, went to a comedy club, and a friend of mine that I waited tables with was up on stage. I'm like, I'm like what are you doing? How can I try it? So I went up the next week. Started doing it, and three months later became an MC, and I've been doing all through the road everything. That's so I cool. Just moved here like two and a half months ago. And you do a bunch of killer one-liners like that, huh? If anybody has a pet-friendly room to rent, I'm looking. <laughs> there you go. So are all those other people that are here. Um, so that How do you feel about loners with huge cocks? You know what the hell? <laughs> Watch it, Jeff. Watch it, Jeff. Bill, so you've been doing stand-up for 18 years. And you're bit, you've just moved here two months ago. Yeah. Biggest show I ever did. I've, I've opened for Brad Garrett in front of a 650 theater. Mm -hmm. Opened for Jimmy Walker. Um, That's cool. Worked with uh, Mike Birbiglia. Nice. Nice. What made you uh, move out here? Did you do comedy? Actually, I, I came out here about a, uh, a year ago to visit a couple friends of mine. A friend of mine lives in Orange County. Another friend lives in Hollywood, does voices. And I came out for a vacation. And before I left, they're like, they're like, Bill, why don't you move out here? You're single. You have no, no kids. You no response. Come on out here. If you don't like it, you can always move back. So I was like, what the hell? So I sold all my furniture, put my dog in the car, and drove across the country. That's great. I love Welcome. that. I love that. Are you having fun so far? 
Yeah, love it. When they draw your name, it's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where else do you, do you get on? Are you getting on every night? I auditioned at Flappers, and I've gotten on there, mm. and they've been there with system, and then I've uh, been coming here a few times. Well, it's like the second time I've been here. Yeah. I've been doing some of the other open mics around town. So this yeah. is what you're out here to do. It's your main passion. You're all yeah, by yourself, right. just you and the dog. Yeah. What kind of dog? Uh, There's a beagle mix. What's his name? Hobo. Ah. Four, four years ago, my neighbors found him in a parking lot, and they brought him into the neighborhood. And for two years, or for two, for two hours, everyone was trying to get him to come to them. He wouldn't go to anybody. So then I came home from work and put my hand out. He came right to me, licked my hand, curled up in my lap. I went to a vet, and he had heartworm, Lyme disease, and a tick, and didn't know anything. So I rehabilitated him. That's exactly, <laughs> that is exactly what I did with Pat Reagan, by the way. Uh, same exact story. Yeah. I'm hanging out in a parking lot one day. I was just a little creature. <laughs> but Hobo yeah. is potty trained, unlike Pat Reagan. Still, he's, he's still has heartworm. Don't talk to my friend like that. <laughs> Bill, uh, so that is so cool that, you know, it seems like, you know, that you must be having a lot of fun with life right now. Yeah. Well, What'd you do for work? Like, how did you oh, save money? Uh, oh, where'd you wait at? Um, I'm, wor I'm working at Black Angus on uh, Corbin Avenue in Northridge right now. Mm -hmm. Just over there. And then uh, for, I worked in Virginia Beach. I waited tables at this seafood restaurant for eight years. I bet you're a great fucking waiter. Huh? Yeah. I get in trouble tell. a lot. I can just tell. <laughs> I get in trouble a lot. What do you get in trouble You make for? jokes while you're waiting tables? Yeah, people are rude or something. I just say it. Everyone's like afraid to say it. You're right. Yeah. I had a... Yeah. yeah, one time I had, a, in, I had an interracial couple one time, and I go, I go, well, well, hey, once you go black, they go, you never go back. I go, oh, your credit gets fucked up. <laughs> now, they laugh. They welcome laugh. to Olive Garden. They laugh. <laughs> <laughs> and that was at a Black Angus. <laughs> no, that was at, <laughs> now, that was at It's store. probably at a, let's face it, a Red Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> now, <it's> at, yeah. <laughs> I always uh, tell people, you know, customers, they say something to me, they go, oh, you're a real good way. I'll be real serious. I'll go, I'm just glad to be out of prison. <laughs> you're not one of those wacky waiters that won't shut up, though, or like it comes to the table telling all the jokes, and you're like, please no. just leave me alone. No, no I, I try to read the guest. Right, yeah. <laughs> I love that, Bill. Tell us yeah. something else exciting about you. You have a huge, huge oversized cock or anything like that? That's, uh, that'd be... <laughs> Anything crazy about you? Any any weird talents? You have a yo-yo on you? Anything I used to like do. That? Uh, <laughs> that is crazy. In 1990, I was in ABC's America's Funniest People. Won two thousand dollars, 1860 after taxes. Wow! What'd wow. you do? What'd you do? I uh, did impressions. I used to do a bunch of impressions. Now now they're so old, younger people probably don't know who they are. That's a weird. What was, your, what was your killer go-to yeah. impression? Uh, Casey Kasem. Oh, I love Casey. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. Will you do yeah. it? Wait, yeah. can I set you up? Can I say? All right. Well, well, hi again, everyone. I'm Casey, and we're coming to you from Hollywood. I've got a letter. A listener writes, Dear Casey, <laughs> I'm a voluptuous blue-eyed blonde, stacked to the max, and would love to get down on my knee. Oops, wrong letter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No wonder you know Josh Robert Thompson. Jesus. <laughs> That's so cool, Bill. Let's have some more. Um, I... <laughs> <laughs> Must some more, please. Nope, nope. Marge and I like to take Bart and Nathan and Maggie and come oh, to the comedy store. Homie. Nope, I want a donut. Very oh, good, Bill. Homie. Oh, wow. Brian has a medi Maggie mediocre stops. Marge that he's trying to shove, a, <laughs> shove into it. Maggie, stop sucking on Homer's dick. There you go. No. There you go. <laughs> No, Marge. You had to go dirty, didn't you? No. All right, guys. <laughs> oh, homie. <laughs> well, Bill, uh, you're fucking hilarious. Hey, thank Congratulations you. on this new life that you're living. You left everybody behind. You're in a new city. You and the dog. Hobo's having the time of his life, I'm sure. It's a lot <laughs> we, more fun out here than Virginia We're hitting Beach. a lot of dog parks. That's great. Would you like to do the Ice House Friday Death Squad show, 10 o'clock? Oh. Yes. Boom. Then you're booked. Hey. That's the Ohio State Buckeye theme song there. Bill Russ, we're going to see you at the Ice House. You're going to do a real big spot at the oldest comedy club in the world on Friday night. Thank you very much. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. It's because of you, people. It's because of you. It's because of you, Bill. There he goes. Bill Russ, ladies and gentlemen. He's on Twitter at the Bill Russ. All right, the oh, gig's canceled shit. on Friday. Get out of here. <laughs> He's on Twitter at the Bill Russ. You can catch him at the Ice House Friday night, the Death Squad show. That's exciting. Love those cool stories, man. Love it when people just go and chase the dream. 
I mean, I, I hear that, though, and I'm like, it's, it's so – open mics are so tough out here to yeah. go back to mics. But but good in the clubs, I guess. You've been doing it. What the fuck? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know Thanks, Pat. Thanks for opening up. <laughs> that was beautiful. For those of you that missed it. How about a hand for Pat and Jeremiah, everybody? Yeah. And this guy, the drummer guy, too. <laughs> Pat acknowledging that open mics are tough. <laughs> Pretty much at the same time sealing the fact that he will be at open mics forever. They're worse than tough. No, I know. They are worse. It's cruel. It's, They're it's cruel. It's unbelievable. It's impossible to practice three minutes at a time, maybe not even go up 60 people. And it's, we're at a time where there's more people than ever doing comedy. Yeah. And it's, you know, I all these veterans come out and move out to I I'm pretty much in it. You know, I've been in this fucking grind for a yeah. little bit. Anyways, nobody cares. That's it. All right. No, you're right. Open mics are very hard. You remember your open mic days, Jeff? What was I that do. like? Anything I do. crazy you remember from those Every days? Every night was crazy. Yeah. Every night was like glory or death. It was heartbreaking. The ye old triple in on 54th Street in Manhattan. Mm. They, they had like a juggler went on right before me. You could do whatever you wanted. It was that kind of open mic. And they had an accordion player that accompanied you. It was uh. surreal. But anyway, uh, I was bombing. And then there was two Navy guys in the front row my very first time. And uh, they started heckling me. And I made fun of their outfits because they had a mustard stain on their Navy whites. Uh. And uh, I, I, like, I liked it. It was scary, but that was a good one. The next 20 were terrible. <laughs> yeah. You know, I thought it's something. I wonder if the, all those people that didn't show up were just scared to be on the show because Jeff's on the show. No. I've been so nice. I, I know. Really made fun. Little sweet he didn't even let me take a crack at that guy. Really? Yeah. I didn't? Uh-uh. <laughs> Bill, you want to come back up here and get roasted by the Roastmaster General? No, come no, on. It's right. not fair. Forget yeah, it. where have you been, Jeff? You've been like the ghost master up here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We'll see him at the uh, Ice House and what's his name now? <laughs> I pulled another name out of the bucket. Kirsten Alberts, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Kirsten Alberts. So things haven't been going so great for me lately. Uh, I've been trying to generate some good karma by paying it forward. So like instead of putting money in people's expired parking meters, I just wait and take the parking tickets off their cars. <laughs> that way they have a good day. Um, but I do like helping people. Like, I give money to the homeless, but only to women, because they don't have to pay them as much. Uh, just, <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, I've always struggled with having a realistic body image. Like, I always wanted a body like Barbie. So I cut my nipples off and sewed my pussy shut. <laughs> and now I'm beautiful. <laughs> I'm so beautiful. I don't know. My boyfriend uh, is a huge Star Wars nerd. He loves Star Wars. So I decided I'm going to surprise him tonight with some sexy role playing. It's going to be, you know, Princess Leia from the waist up and Chewbacca from the waist down. <laughs> <laughs> Kirsten Alberts, another very funny comedian. First time on the show, right? Yes. Welcome. Thank you. That Thank you awesome. for having me. How long have you been doing stand up? I've been doing it five years. Where at? Um, I I started in Phoenix and I just moved out here a year ago, so I've just been kind of doing a bunch of open mics. That's cool. Yeah, I've done a couple book shows, but not too many. Very funny. Yeah, thanks. You do a lot of spots, like a lot of open mics, or? Um, I kind of stick to, like, uh, just doing, like, I like I do the haha -ha a lot. Like, I just, I run new material there, and I try and work it there, and then try to get, like, on booked shows to do the material. I don't know. What do you do for a living? Um, I uh, process health insurance claims uh, during the day. I work from home. <laughs> Yeah, it's <laughs> the party started with your insurance claims, everybody. <laughs> it's not very exciting. Yeah. You write jokes uh, at work when you're bored? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do. I write them down and uh, I post them on Twitter and stuff while I'm working. Now Sometimes I sleep while I work. Your Twitter uh, handle here says "dirty hippie comic." Is that true? Are you really a dirty hippie? 
Do you um, smell? Chewbacca yeah. downstairs. I don't know. Yeah. I, uh... My hair looks good because I just got it done today, but um, I, I shower like once a week. I can't oh. imagine what it, lo- what it uh, looks like I know. yesterday. Girl. It's, I know. I got to work on it. <laughs> I know. It's shower bad. once a week. Why do you Hi. think that is? Um, <laughs> I just, <laughs> I can't get myself to do it. It's just a lot of work. Do you really have a boyfriend? I do. I mean, he doesn't care. He's like eating crumb cake. No, he doesn't Whoa. care. How He's many done. crumb cake references are you going to make tonight? <laughs> Great. Did you do have a crumb cake on the way here? <laughs> No, he's uh, he's 45, so he's happy to have me. 45. Wow, yeah. what does he do for work? He uh, he does a bunch of different stuff. He uh, <laughs> he does contract work, and then uh, he also like promotes comedy shows and stuff still in Arizona, but he does it online. So. Oh, he's st- <laughs> he's still yeah. in Arizona. No, he's not in Arizona. He does the promotions for Arizona shows. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So you guys moved out here together a year ago? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So let me, let's get back to the showering thing for a second. It's, <laughs> Come on, it's something that, that I've is, never that is weird. It's something that I've never understood because I can't even start my day without a shower. Like just like coffee and everything else, it's something that I absolutely need. But didn't you date the little Esther for like three years? No. She's like the dirtiest. No, girl I all didn't. None, nothing that you just said is true, Brian. <laughs> anyway, uh... <laughs> wow. We've found Tony's weak spot, everybody. <laughs> you said I dated her for three years. We dated for 11 months, and it was literally eight years ago, for those of you keeping track, Brian yeah, Redbeck. But didn't she, like, she never took a shower. That's she not sh- true. She took bath with dogs. Every, she pooped on the floor in the kitchen. Every single day. This, the stuff that you're talking about is just all funny stories that we've told. But she, she did do that, right? Hey, did no, her she downstairs showered every look day. like crumb cake? <laughs> <laughs> Redbeck, you my boy! <laughs> oh God! Oh dear Lord! Uh, where are we? What was that? Uh, that homeless joke was really funny. Thank you. Am I using the right mic? Because I don't feel like I, I can hear. Can that. we get him any more volume? Yeah, I mean, it's on full blast right now. Okay. Is it on full blast? Yeah, it before it starts going. Can you guys hear me in the back? Yeah, I don't know. It's just not loud at all. We're here every single week. Is Josh one? here? Josh Martin. It's, How I about mean, this we, one? Is it, it better? There, that's much better. Whatever that is. I turned it up really, really high. That's where we need it. It's really, really high. We needed it really, really high. I Kirsten, understand. tell us something else interesting about you. Um, I love Harry Potter. Um, I've read the books like seven times. Wow. All that time you could have been showering. I know. <laughs> <laughs> And you're just sitting there, reading books, flipping pages. Yeah. Do you think it would help you if they made waterproof books? That maybe. Maybe th- actually. What is the part? And just explain to me concisely in some way. What is it that you hate about showering? You're saying that it's work, but it doesn't seem like work at all. To like. Long rub hair. Rub it's, your body yeah. with soap. Well, I don't know. Yeah, it's just you got to exfoliate and then you got to shave. Yeah, you but you also have to clean your butthole, you know? Like after know. a couple of days, you're leaving stains I shower, on chairs. like if I have to like impress somebody. But if there's like, like you guys aren't going to see me later. You don't care. You know? People at work probably care when they smell buttholes when you walk. I, I work by myself in a chair. So it really just not The chair, chair has to smells. smell so. I know. <laughs> A stink bomb of a chair. <laughs> what, how, what's the longest you've gone without showering? Um, maybe like a week and a half. But it's like, oh, I'm so sorry. If people say it's like a little bit of like depression, but like mostly I just like don't care. Yeah. I do it like if I have to be like in close proximity with somebody, I, I'll shower. Let me ask you this. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. Your boyfriend, who's forty-five, he goes down on you and you let him. If it's no, been... I make sure I shower if like we like do sex stuff. Well, how do you know you're gonna do Which sex isn't that stuff? That often. Oh, he's I text, see. He'll text her. He's like, "Hey, my wife's out of town. I'll see you on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> Could you please, for the love of God, shower?" All right. Exfoliate, shave. It's back on. <laughs> He's like, what's for dinner? Soap and water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The sorting hat would put her in the bathtub. So. <laughs> <laughs> so sort of going back to this Twitter handle, which again is Dirty Hippie Comic. I get the comic. I get the dirty. What makes you a hippie? Um, I just uh, like 
want peace. Peace? It seems like you're not even quite sure that you want peace. Like, you could turn villain any second. She no. looked up the Wikipedia definition for hippie, and it said, I want peace. <laughs> and not bathing. <laughs> How long has it been since you've taken a shower right yeah, now? Yeah, what are we at right now, if you had to guess? And can um, Jeremiah smell? I, did, I showered last Wednesday. Whoa. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, oh, Jesus shit. Christ. Yeah. Can I smell you? <laughs> no. Come on. No. Come on. No. It's the Roastmaster General. Let him smell you. No, no it's okay. No. no. Believe me. No, when so, no means no <laughs> when it comes to fucking... Come on. Don't, don't put up a stink about it. Just let him... <laughs> She showers once a week, and that's Gash Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, oh, what? You didn't come out my boy? <laughs> I love how you guys defend each other. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, that is an interesting thing. Do you have jokes about it? Do you, have, do you ever talk about it? Oh, okay. Yeah, I do. Very cool. How much material do you think you have overall? Because those are some really great jokes and, you have. And how yeah. much is it stained with poop from not washing oh, your butt? All right. <laughs> All right, butthole, butthole, nice. butthole, poopy, 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 Brian. There Hashtag we go. Hashtag crumb cake. <laughs> so if somebody goes to see your stand-up show and afterwards they say she really stunk up the joint... I mean, they mean it. You're not offended. No, it doesn't offend me. No. Because All right. Well, it's good to have goals. <laughs> do you have anything? Do you have anything? I'm not showering. That's my thing. That's my hook. Yeah. yeah that's that's my uh, that's my my marketing is. You uh, are one of the dirtiest comics. <laughs> uh, really, really filthy material, and that's just what you're wearing. I'm sorry if I've grossed you guys out. <laughs> Uh, you were great. Yeah, absolutely joke. great. It's always so, so relieving to find uh, a great joke writer. Thank you on this show. Thanks and for having me on. I, I can't. I feel like you're gonna be a big star one day. I can imagine Jimmy Fallon holding his nose while talking to you. <laughs> yeah. That's the you dream. found your lane. You found your lane. It happens to be uh, outside, but <laughs> down the street. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully you get booked for Fallon on a Thursday and not a hopefully. Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, because she showers on Wednesdays. Oh, she showers on yeah. Wednesdays. Um, there you go. Great stuff. What's your Kirsten name? Kirsten Alberts, ladies and smell. gentlemen. When there she, she walks goes. by, smell. She's on Twitter at Dirty Hippie Comic. Yeah. Dirty Hippie Comic. She was uh, <laughs> That's purella terrific. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I mean, what's up, guys? How's it going over there, man? Who's your drummer? Who is this guy? This is Joel Jimenez right here. Hey, Joel, Joel Jimenez. Fuck yeah. How many times a day do you guys shower? Or do, um, a week, I guess. Do you guys shower every day? Yeah. 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 Twice a day sometimes? Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. a little grimier. Yeah. 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 That makes How sense. How many people here don't shower every day by round of applause? <laughs> wow. Got some stanky <laughs> pussy in the house tonight. <laughs> <Yeah>. oh. <laughs> Fucking disgusting. <laughs> All right, so it's not that weird, I guess. People don't just shower. No, there was just a few monsters here. It's <laughs> just, it's just. Some girl just said, "It's the moisture." <laughs> it's the weave. It's the weave. Gross. Looks like I pulled another new name out of this bucket. Put your hands together for Frank Ma. <laughs> So, I don't get when guys brag about having sex all night, because uh, I never wanted to have sex for that long. Um, I love sex as much as the other guy, but after I've just had it, I only kind of like sex. Second time sex to me is just I. But what's great after sex to me is sleep. And I think sleep after sex is the best thing in the world, because I could do that all night. It doesn't matter how good the sex is. I could be having great sex with the woman that I love, and we're looking at each other's eyes, and we're together, and we're full of lust, and I orgasm, and she orgasms, and that's only the second best thing to happen to me that night. Because afterwards, I get to pass the fuck out. 
That's all I got. Thank you. Fuck yeah. Frank Moss. It's one of your first times doing stand-up comedy? Uh, I've done a lot of open mics. When did you start? The beginning of the year. The beginning of the year. Yeah, yeah so you're a few months in. Yeah. Perfect. Frank w Moss. Was it a leap year? <laughs> Fresh out of medical school. He doesn't uh, even get jokes, let alone write them. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you're stating a lot of just obvious things. I think we all get tired after sex. We yeah, we don't want to have sex. Uh, okay, I, I don't want to give excuses, but thank Frank. you. Yeah. What? You're. <laughs> I, I wasn't as prepared as I could be for this. It looks. It's like you're talking to your parents. <laughs> uh, what What ethnicity are you? Chinese. Chinese all the way, hundred yeah. percent. I was born in China. You were born in China. How long have you been in America? Uh, fifteen years. Wow. So you were the edgiest comic in China. <laughs> Dude, I was a nerd growing up, man. I was a straight edge Chinese person until the beginning of the year. Wow. And, th and then what happened? What's not straight edge about you anymore? That I do comedy. That's it. Yeah. What? yeah. I, I don't like. I don't smoke weed. I don't That's get that drunk. Watch I out just, for <laughs> the badass over here. <laughs> <laughs> Rock and roll. That's Japanese. <laughs> I think I'm turning Chinese. Straight edge is di is different. Straight edge is a is a punk thing. Also, yeah. the phrase it means you don't drink or have sex. You leave a clean you leave a cl lead a clean lifestyle. I pretty much don't drink and have sex. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you have sex? What's up with that? Uh, it's not by choice. Really? It's not offered to me that often. Uh, do you ever do you ever go out? Oh, uh, he cured. <laughs> I mean, I live at home. You live at home with your parents? Yeah. Oh wow. Wait, how old are you? Twenty five. Wow, you guys do something about that. There you go, Brian, I, I the king of the obvious. That's what, Brian your action, that's what your act should be about. That would be funny. Yeah. 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 Are you offended by the decor here? <laughs> Feel right. Who sushi? <laughs> the sushi. Anyway, you had some fun ideas. I think you got to slow it down and think think about them a little deeper because. They're like good premises, you know, premises that are pretty obvious to people, so they'll relate. But try to think of some, uh, you know, little deeper punchlines, maybe. What do your parents do for work? My dad is in healthcare. He works an uh, ultrasound machine oh, at a wow. hospital. My mom's a real estate agent. Wow. Are they disappointed in you because you quit and now you're doing comedy? They don't know. Oh. They know I quit my job, but they don't so know. So what, oh. what was the job that you had before this? Uh, check this out. Management consulting. Huh. Yeah. Management consulting for what? For like a big consulting company. Oh, mm. Like one of those no. Deloitte types. Oh, no. Did you, did you have to go into any other companies and do anything interesting ever? Like what? what interesting? No. What, what recognizable companies, yeah. company did you do anything? Well, I can't for? say, obviously. Oh. How uh, long have you been in America, your family? 15 years. Do you plan on telling them, or no? Yeah. After I get some success. Wow. So you're never going to tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think your parents have any idea what a podcast is? No. That's good. It's really good. <laughs> that's always that's always really good. What part of LA do you guys live in? Chinatown. Torrance. 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 Yeah. Yep. So kind of Chinese. Yeah. Same thing. That's interesting. You have any uh, siblings? Nope. You're the only child. I was born in that generation. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Boys only, dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Way to take a negative and flip it into a positive, Jeremiah. <laughs> Do you hate Koreans? Man, we all hate Koreans. What you talking about? How about your parents? What what do your uh, what do your parents hate? Do, you, do they ever talk about it out loud? It's no, all right. They're, you, they're pretty cool. I know you're fucking lying right now. Come on. Who do your parents hate? Black people? Uh, as much as any other Chinese people hate black people. So Maybe they hate less. black people is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird answer that was. <laughs> Instead of throwing his parents under the bus, he throws his parents and every other Chinese person. <laughs> it, only as much as every other Chinese person do we hate black people. <laughs> What's your uh, favorite category in porn? Good question. I know people are not going to believe me when I say I don't watch a lot of porn. I, 
I'll say that with saying I jerk off a lot, but I don't watch a lot of porn. How do you but how do you do it? Just like, memories. It's called memories? an imagination, Red Band. You said memory. He did he did just answer with the actual answer, memory. Oh sorry. What are you, what are the memories that you have? What are the what are those of? <laughs> Sex I've had before. It's just like the wrong sound effect for that moment completely. Uh What's it like being a Chinese comedian? There's not role models. Like, what do you think about it? Do you feel, I don't know, do you feel like an outsider more? Or what's it? Uh, no, I think you make it if you're funny. If you're not, you don't. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. I think it's a, one of the pure meritocracies, so I'm not worried. Right, right. <laughs> um, have you ever taken a girl back to your, uh, your place? One of my parents? Yeah. No. no. So when, when you have hooked up with girls, where have you done that at? Well, I've only lived with my parents for the last six months. And oh, I lived you're living life sort of backwards here. You realize that. A lot of people start living with their parents when they're born. I had a real job before I did comedy. <laughs> I've only lived with my parents the last six months, so, you know. Baller! <laughs> so you moved out when you're, what, 18? You went to college where? Berkeley. Berkeley. Oh, no. Uh, what a terrible choice. <laughs> you guys don't oh, like why Berkeley? Why do that? Ugh. Wow. What do you guys have against Berkeley? It's just a shitty school, man. <laughs> yeah, that sucks, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what would happen if you brought home a black girl to your parents? Yeah, what and would happen? <laughs> <laughs> Give us an example of what you think would happen if you just walked, you know, you walked straight into the... Hello. All right, well, let's, let's start it off like a normal day. You pull into the driveway. You, you pull all the way through the living room wall, <laughs> right? The car just goes straight through bushes and a window. You say, Mom, Dad, I'm home. What's up? Hello, son. Hello. 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 How's the, how's the, how's the professional job going? You want some uh, Slim Sushi? Um, mom. Who this? Mom. Who this? Your cleaning lady? <laughs> <laughs> Who this? <laughs> How come your parents talk funny? <laughs> <laughs> We're Chinese. Oh, okay. <laughs> what that? <laughs> <laughs> Who this? Is this your healthcare provider? <laughs> no, I'm his baby mama. What? That's right. I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Frank, if you got a black girl pregnant, would you and you and she wanted to keep the baby, how would you tell your parents that? Like, can you give us an example? Just say into the mic, like, if, pretend like they're in front of you at the. Uh, what's the matter, boy? Yeah, what's what what? <laughs> <laughs> Let it out! Speak out! I'm Papa son, Mama son. We we worry. Right, Mama son. I honestly, don't know how they would. Come on, Frank. Shit. It's not how comedy works. You got to roll with it. Explain to us. How you would tell We're not gonna let you that. fail. Oh, Just oh, go. Mom, mom Just this is my girlfriend. We're pregnant. We're gonna what, have a black her, kid. What is her name? What? <laughs> <laughs> We're pregnant. Mom. See what happens when you just go for it? You get a laugh like that. You're gonna have a black baby? <laughs> <laughs> what? No, son, you'd not have a the black of the baby. Your mom is mad, but I am a furious. <laughs> no broken <bracket> with me. <laughs> I mean, she's already pregnant. She's what? half black, half Asian. She's Make her an unforgettable daughter. <laughs> Bring her to the karate dojo. No. <laughs> <laughs> we take her to my friend dry cleaner. I give you quota hanger. Oh. <laughs> uh. Too soon for that? Too soon? That's actually his uh, his mom's name. <laughs> Frank. So, uh, that's amazing. Very fun stuff. It was very nice to meet you. Come back and do another minute sometime, okay? Frank Ma, everybody. There he goes. Nice to meet you, Frank. Fuck. He's so Asian, he dresses like he's in medical school. Um, 
We've gotten to the part of the show where we're going to bring up your two regulars. These young ladies write and perform a brand new minute every single week. They do not get pulled out of the bucket. They have one of the hardest jobs in all of comedy, trying to keep up with writing a minute every single week of the year. This week's no different. Going first tonight, you know her as a Kill Tony regular and uh, so many other great things. Put your hands together for Melissa Esslinger, everybody. <laughs> So not everything that you water will grow because I've had water my whole life and I never made it past 11 years old. Either that or I'm just really dehydrated. Anyway, I almost jumped off a cliff when I was three years old. Um, I think that's why I do stand up. I uh, was chasing a lizard. Uh, we were at this national park called Natural Bridge because that's what it is. It's a natural bridge cliff. Um, and. <laughs> Anyway, I was chasing a lizard, and apparently lizards can climb on the sides of things, but people can't. Um, but I was wearing overalls, so my dad grabbed them, and that day Oshkosh saved my life. Uh, I wish that I fell off of it right now, but that's all I got. There you go, in a classic maneuver. Makes fun of herself on her way out. That's fun. What would you mean by the, I tried to jump off a cliff, I think that's why I do stand-up? Into the microphone. Uh, In. uh, I, I, what did I mean by that? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, you should know, you said I guess, it. Oh, okay, <laughs> yes I do know. <laughs> um, well, I was running, like I have a, I guess I should have talked about this. Uh, I have the memory, like, in, in my head of, like, I can see my foot in my hand. I was literally flying, like, no regard to the edge of a 100-foot drop. And I feel like stand-up feels like that, because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got it there. When you say it like that, when you actually explain what you're saying, <laughs> then you can get a big pop like yeah. that. How many you, times uh, did you get, get up this week? Or how many times do you usually get up every week? Um, lately, it's only been like three, which is not enough. Yeah. Three a day, maybe. Yeah. I mean, Whoa. You're, I mean, I mean, when you start off stand-up, that's... I, I was doing three a day probably yeah. for years. Yeah. And I, you have to do that or you're just going to lose it and you're going to forget what you're talking about. And like yeah. you, you pretty much said stuff that you, you didn't explain it to us. Like you, it, it made sense in your head, but it didn't make sense. Brian to hates here. you. We've noticed this yeah, every single that, week. It's been a very okay. running thing that he simply I mean, can't hide it all for I a did, second. I did get my car back and I'm, I'm just waiting to, so I have mobility again. Now I right. uh, can't fill the tank, but I'm almost there. I'm getting there and then I'll be back to doing as many as I was. Jeff, is this the first time you've seen little Melissa Esslinger? Sorry. She has a nervous style, nervous delivery. Okay. Before she was shaking and apologizing and wasn't able to get her words out. So last week she had a great set. This week, you know, it's one of the hardest things writing and performing a brand new minute every single week that's on the record. Uh, but she has really good jokes and an interesting delivery, as you can tell. Any advice or anything from Melissa, Jeff? Any initial reactions? How many reactions? times have you done Kill Tony? Um, I started in August. Wow. So, You've been doing it every week. That yeah. right there is a major accomplishment, being oh, able to thanks. go back and work the same room. Because all comics, they get nervous trying out material. So yeah. you're brave. I don't know what the fuck you were talking about. <laughs> At all. But that sucks. it was brave and it was real and it was about you and your family and your experiences. So keep, do keep going down that. that <laughs> eventually, you're going to be able to climb up the side of things. Right. Cool. Hell yeah. Yeah, you definitely lead uh, points and likability and, uh, you know, delivery. But really, like he said, you know, nothing really. Really love the Tom Petty haircut, too. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, <laughs> just goof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is your nervous, uh, has your nervous stylings affected your real life at any point this week or lately? No. Anything I, crazy happened lately in life? Um, I had an awkward moment with this guy that I see every time I watch, walk past Saddle Ranch. The homeless really? guy what with happened? the cup that changes? No, it was this guy. I think he works valet or something, but apparently he thought I worked at Starbucks. But I don't, and I was really confused, and he was really confused. And, and, now I, really and he confused. <laughs> I, I suck today. Well, um, cause he, he, he was like, do you have a twin? And instead of saying, like, an, a, no, because I don't, I was like, maybe. <laughs> 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 
This is why I ask these questions. It's because that is literally... Let's tease it. Next week you should tell a story about the awkward encounter yeah. that you have that week. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Y your real life things like that, instead of trying to dig for these deep jokes that sound like jokes, you, with your delivery and your likability, you could totally just say things that really happen to you, yep. and that's the reaction that you're always going to get. So, <sighs> another, remind, me, no remind me of Janine Garofalo. Watch her stuff. She's okay. great. Yeah. Janine Garofalo? I can't wait, see wait, wait, wait a second. <laughs> How old are you? Tw uh, 25. All right. Yeah. You should know Janine. You check I this should. shit. You gotta yeah. look back a little bit, and that'll help you. Yes, you won't steal, sure. but just check it out. Get influenced by good comics. Definitely. Mm -hmm. There you go. A little Thank inspiration. You. There she goes, Melissa Esslinger. <laughs> She's on Twitter, Melissa Esslinger. See her every week. Oh shit. Put your hands together for your other regular. It's Vanessa Johnston, ladies and gentlemen. Hey guys. Uh. It's crazy that we live in a first world country and yet it's unhealthy to drink the tap water. That's, in <laughs> That's insane to me. In Los Angeles, they discovered that when sunlight hits the LA water supply, it becomes about as toxic as 2000 x-rays. So what they decided to do is just dump a million little black plastic balls in the LA reservoir to try to block out the sunlight. And then they walked away like that was a solution. Like, yo, do you cancel our tax money to go to, like, a giant Brita or something? It's insane. And then, like, the CDC recently announced that there's large concentrations of rocket fuel and birth control hormones in the water supply, which explains the ten-legged blue homosexual frogs fucking outside my apartment. <laughs> I don't know if they're gay. They look the same, so I assume... <laughs> Vanessa Johnston talking about water. I know. There's a lot Bye -bye. there. There's a lot there. Nice CDC reference. Yeah, the CDC thing. That's, that that, that, uh, that really stood out to me more than anything. Like center of uh, disease, disease control. and control. Yeah. Oh right. But you know, it's like a you're dropping that in there. You know, they they say that all you have to say is they. You yeah. know what I mean? CDC people are like, what? And then, right. you know, little things like that. But that's, there's some stuff in there. You know, move the Brita up, move everything up. Same thing as always. Mm -hmm. Trim the fat, figure it out. Have you been doing spots during the week? Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, I do like, go up like two times, two, three times, six nights a week. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Great, 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 great. Maybe if you take that, that, that you have an eye for detail, you know, CDC, Brita, just these kind of words. If you make those, maybe the. Try to incorporate them into your punchlines and have your setups be a little more easier to just flow into. Digest. And then those, mm -hmm. the, the way you use the language is interesting. So okay. maybe land on that stuff. Just so that's, a, that's a great piece of advice right there. It's landing. But I could be, thank you. But I also could be wrong. Like if your thing is that, then don't. You would know better than I would or we would. But yeah, you know, I'll try do your it. thing. Thank you. Confidence is key. Yeah, totally. Always awesome tons guys. of swagger Thank with the great you. Vanessa Johnston. There she goes, ladies and gentlemen. Vanessa Johnston's on Twitter, Vanessa Johnston. Ryan Chayibelt's drawing is right here. Look what he did tonight. Is that crazy or what? Wow. <laughs> Look at you, Jeff. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's uh, me, you, Brian, and the horse of truth made it all in there. I love Mangria. It's so delicious. So unbelievably good that I drink it all the time. Shout Adam Carolla's Adam Carolla. Mangria. We love you, Adam. Reagan and Watkins, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. they did it. Josh Martin yeah. Comic. At Joel. Jeremiah's stand up at Patty Reagan. Joel Jimenez, Roast Battle, and Jeff Ross Roast Tuesday. The Boston Police Check Department. Out Roast Battle on the road coming to a, a Chicago, Austin, New York, and the Belly Room very soon. Yep. Check it out every Tuesday here at the Comedy Store live or on Periscope. Fun episode for you longtime listeners here tonight. This one will go down for a little while, is that one? Nashville, we'll see you this Sunday. Thank you, live audience. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you so much.